In 1889, a young Englishman quietly arrived at a small western Chinese city. He had ostensibly come for hunting and adventure, but he was really an English intelligence officer based in India named Hamilton Bower. Not long before his arrival, Andrew Dalgleish, famous English Central Asia explorer, was killed by an Afghan who reportedly fled to Kucha in Xinjiang. In the late 19th and early 20th century, China's northwest frontier was in chaos which attracted many explorers and schemers from the West. Bauer didn't sit around waiting in Kucha. He swiftly set up his own intelligence network. One day, when Bauer was out hunting, a local came to see him. Not about information on the killer, but about a torn old book bound in birch bark. The book was written in an unknown language. Soon after this, Bauer took the book to the Oriental College in Lahore, in India. A scholar there interpreted the book for him. He said it was a Sanskrit manuscript on medicine and witchcraft, written in ancient Indic Brahmi letters around the 5th century AD. The discovery caused a stir in academia. Indian people wrote on birch bark in ancient times. The birch bark deteriorates fairly quickly in hot, humid India, so manuscripts from the 5th century AD had never been before found. It didn't seem to make sense to find a Sanskrit manuscript in China. Bauer's discovery kindled the interest of Western countries in Xinjiang. Adventurers from England, Germany, Russia and Japan soon arrived, eager to explore a previously unexplored academic field. They came with the reckless spirit of professional adventurers and the wild ambitions of conquerors. They were strangers competing to understand the history. Even a Westerner, who only measured the height of an unknown Asian mountain, could become a hero. The discoveries that followed in the Kucha area were astonishing. Many ancient manuscripts were unearthed from the desert sand. In addition to the usual ancient Chinese classics, Manuscripts written in other languages, such as Sanskrit, Uyghur, Tubu, and Arabic were discovered. Some of the languages are still in use today, but most are dead languages. Behind every dead language is a lost civilization. Exploring these ancient scripts means exploring different civilizations. Linguists were thrilled to see these scripts that were as mysterious as mummies. Among the more familiar scripts, they found one that was very mysterious. It 
had been seen on locally unearthed scriptures and inscriptions on potteries and walls. After a great deal of study, scholars determined that it came from ancient India, but they couldn't decipher it. It didn't seem to match any known grammar system. After all attempts at interpretation failed, scholars suddenly realized that this script must represent the language of the ancient inhabitants of the Kuchar region. This was the Kuchar language that was spoken by the Kuchar people back then. Chuzhuan the language of Kucha came from in Xuanzang, the Tang Buddhist monk, passed by Kucha on the way to India seeking Buddhist scriptures. He wrote in the Great Tang Records on the Western regions that the language of Kucha came from India with slight changes. This conformed with Kucha scripts found later. Experts weren't sure what the original language was, where the Kucha people came from, and what happened to them. The manuscript of an ancient Uyghur Buddhist play called Matrasimit was unearthed not long after this in the Kucha region. It provided some clues to Western linguists. The Uyghur people migrated into the Xinjiang region from the northern desert in the 9th century. In Kucha, they converted to Buddhism. In the preface of the manuscripts, experts found a passage that roughly translated as Maitrasimit was translated into Uyghur from the local Tokharoi language. Linguists generally agree that Tokharoi must be the Tukharian language referred to in both Eastern and Western history books. There were only small differences in pronunciation. The so-called Tukharians were a tribe that about 3,000 years ago roamed around the area west to the Black Sea and east to the Tarim Basin in Xinjiang, extending all the way to today's Gansu province. The many references to them in Chinese historical records are uniformly vague. It's generally believed that the Yuzhe people who lived along the Hershey Corridor in Gansu around the time of ancient Rome were the Tocharians during the Tang Dynasty, which is 618 to 907 AD. Xuanzang passed through a country called Tokharistan on the way to today's Afghanistan. Since the Tokharian people lived a nomadic life for a long period of time, it's difficult to identify them with a split between the Kuchar people and the Tokharians. It took 20 years for Western linguists to begin cracking the grammar and determine that Tokharian was an Indo-European language, language spoken by some proto-European people. But the main ethnic groups in Xinjiang today speak Altaic languages. This could indicate that the ancestors of the Kucha people were a branch of the ancient Indo-Europeans. An ancient Kucha burial site was discovered in the village of Kizil in Baichong County, which is within the site of ancient Kucha. The Xinjiang Institute of Archaeology began excavating the site in 1989 when it was threatened by dam construction. 
科兹尔墓葬它有一次葬、二次葬，还有多人的重葬。但是从发掘的一百六十座墓当当中呢，有一个很重要的资料，就是说，他这个夫妻的合葬都是侧身屈指，脸对着脸。如果我们要接住欧洲啊，像地中海啊，在意大利来说的话，他已经达到了四千年，啊、嗯。呃、嗯，如果从科兹尔水库墓地啊，这个埋葬的葬式和葬书来说，这对秋瓷文化的早期，它的人种啊、埋葬习俗啊，呃，提供了很形象生动的这个这个参考资料。Archaeologists also found that all the bodies were covered with a thin layer of charcoal, perhaps as a preservative and drying agent. But it also allowed for carbon-14 dating. Wang Bo, a researcher at the Xinjiang Institute of Archaeology. Says that measurements of the bodies showed that they were European. The discovery at the Kizil site wasn't an isolated case. In late 1979, archaeologist Wang Benghua made a similar discovery on the east side of Kucha, also along the northern edge of the Tarim Basin near Peacock River. Archaeologists were surveying the dried Peacock Riverbed when they spotted the tips of holes on a small sand dune. They realized that the dune was probably the site of human activity. Fifteen days of work revealed six grand caves arranged in a strange pattern. The graves were surrounded by a circle of seven poles with lines of wood up to ten meters long radiating from the circle. As a result, people called it. The Sun Cemetery. The people buried in the Sun Cemetery were all male. Their bodies were well preserved because of the dry desert air. The archaeologists immediately observed that they had long faces, high nose bridges, and blonde hair. Early the next year, archaeologists excavated a female mummy in better condition from the neighboring site of Tuyin. Japanese scholars made a model of her face, which showed that she was obviously European. Since the excavation site wasn't far from the famous Lolan ruin, she was called the Lolan Beauty. The name soon spread across the world, and she was exhibited in many places at home and abroad, amazing people around the world. Twenty years later, an even more exciting discovery was made. In 2004, in a desert east of the Lolan ruin, a team from the Xinjiang Institute of Archaeology cleaned up the Little River burial site. Said to contain 1,000 coffins. This was a sacred temple to death. When the cover of a boat-shaped coffin was removed. A European girl's face appeared. It was immediately apparent that she had a mysterious, slight smile on her face.
The team affectionately named her the Princess of Little River. The Sun Cemetery, the Lowland Beauty and the Princess of Little River are all about 3,800 years old. Together with the Kizil burial site of Bai Chang, they form an east-west line on the northern edge of the Tarim Basin. On the southern side of the basin, archaeologists also found traces of the same people. In April 1985, the Zag Hun Luk site in Xiamo County in Xinjiang was robbed. The Xinjiang Institute of Archaeology sent a team to rescue what remained. They found an intact toil mummy, definitely of European origin. His face was tattooed with a swirl pattern. And he was buried very close to a baby's grave. The baby, also of European descent, was only about 40 centimeters long. The Zakhun Luk site was active about 2,500 years ago. The many archaeological discoveries proved that there were proto-European people living on both the northern and southern edges of the Turin Basin about 3,000 years ago. They lived at scattered oases and slowly migrated from west to east. Study of the Tokarian manuscript discovered that Kucha showed that it was written in an Indo-European language. The archaeological discoveries seemed to perfectly confirm the linguistic analysis. After they settled at the oasis of Kucha, the physical features of the Takarian people began to subtly change. Here are portraits of people from religious wall paintings from Kucha, painted around the 4th century. These are commoners. They are Kucha warriors. There's a Kucha king and his queen. It would be very difficult to identify the ethnic group of these people. In other words, their physical appearance was already a combination of European and Mongol features, plus their own unique qualities. From from studying the clothing and decorations found in the graves, plus the various ruins and sacrificial objects, Experts concluded that East and West had met here a long time ago. Both the people and their culture were a blend. Because you 在人类漫长的历史时期来说，那欧洲的人种高加索人种，它不断的随着这个亚欧大陆啊，作为从这个草原来说，它不断的呀向东方迁徙。那么新疆这个这个地区，正好是。
啊、呃，北方蒙古利亚的这哎人种，他向西迁徙，那么呃西边的这个白色人种，他不断的从西方向东方迁，然后在在新疆，呃这个呃人种啊在碰撞啊混血。Modern DNA technology can trace the migration of ethnic groups. The climate of Xinjiang ensures that mummies are well preserved, which means the chances are good for finding intact DNA. Chinese and foreign experts are analyzing DNA samples from the Proto-European people who once lived in the Tarim Basin to accurately trace their migration route. This work is still ongoing and will require a large and accurate DNA database. But preliminary results have provided some clues. The Proto-Europeans living in the Tarim Basin 3,000 years ago already had some East Asian genes. In other words, they had already intermarried with the local population before the beginning of the written history of the era. In other words, they had already intermarried with the local population before the beginning of the written history of the area. It must have been a brave group of people who migrated into the Tarim Basin, either the west or the east. They had to either climb over snow-covered mountains or pass through miles of shifting sand. They found oases at the feet of these steep mountains and along the edge of the Gobi Desert. These scattered oases, connected by their footsteps, trace the Grecian route. The trip would seem daunting to anybody today. They accomplished it long before the advent of modern times. A storm revealed a graveyard hidden from the world for thousands of years. But the appearance of flattened skulls, shattered bones, and other anomalies were a mystery. Find out what secrets the graveyard holds in part two, Ghost City.